I hear tell it's duck season. I'm <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> I'm not a hunter. <laughs> yeah, if you're a hunter, great. Praise the Lord. You know, I have a brother-in-law who's he's done bow hunting. He's done you know elk, deer, you know all of it. You know, and he lives in Oregon, so you know he kind of yeah he's he's a cool guy. Basically, you know, I like him. I'm just not a hunter. <laughs> But I wanted to put on my hat, you know, to kind of dedicate this video to some guys I was talking to in Georgia. <laughs> and they're about kind of that area. But uh, I was amused recently that, you know, there's been this big to-do about some duck guys, you know, and duck sergeants and whatever. They're in swamps or whatever, and they're doing, they're, a couple of them are Christians, or maybe they all are. I don't know the whole story about them, but... You know, there's just a big stir up on the internet, you know. So, anyways, I was talking to these guys, you know, and, you know, there was like kind of most times on the internet we find ourselves complaining more than we have an explanation or a realization of solution or problem solving that we could do while we're on the internet. Instead of using the tools to develop and solve a problem, sometimes we're venting a problem. And so I was trying to offer and proffer some solutions that, you know, I know that are out there, you know, and th in this particular case, it was about home education as opposed to public education is that, hey, if public education isn't working for you, use home education or go to a church and get private education or use some other means because public education never once was started as just we're going to have public education. No, it started from private education. Then they decided to take what was happening in one sector and apply it to everyone in general. And that's why public education, while it's good, it's good for what it's good for. And you have to recognize different things for what they're good for. If I want to teach a child in the way that they should go, then I'm going to train them up in the way that I want them to be trained in. And that's what the Bible commands parents to do. We're commanded, if we are a parent, I'm not a parent, but if we are a parent, well, in a way I am, I guess, you know, because I have lots of children out there that are like, millions, no I'm kidding. But um, it says that he who is without children has many more than he who is who has children. And that's true because by way of the same spirit that we are adopted by our Father in heaven, likewise, we too of the spiritual realm do have many children that we are accountable, responsible, and actually raise up for but having said that, parents, after the physical flesh raising of their children, training them up in the way that they should go of their own nature, should manifest that in the reality of making choices, looking at educational systems and saying, no, I don't want to be a part of that. I'll choose to go somewhere else or I choose to do something else. We all have the opportunities in our poverty as well as in our prosperity to educate, irregardless of whether we have the funds or not. I'm educating you and I'm doing it freely, really. Basically, I'm taking what little funds in my poverty and I have a camera and I have one internet connection and that's it, boom, we're broke, you know, we're poor. And we provide for a wealth of volumes of educational materials that are going out into the entire world now through Facebook and Blogger, which is a free internet service provider that does you know, things for, um, it provides for blog sites and web blogs and stuff like that. Um, through for free forum, through uh, a website I do have that I paid for, you know, but um, the, the bottom line is that what I want to do in education, I do. I choose to. I'll go out and, and earn the money for that reason. You know, if I needed to go to work in order to provide for the ministry, then I would and I'd say, okay, I'm going to get a job to pay for the ministry. I wouldn't have the ministry to pay for itself. That to me makes no sense at all. It's not part of my my theology. I don't believe in that. I believe that your vocation pays, pays for your avocation. I'm not into this kind of like self-supportive ministry that supports itself and a continuation to a perpetuation of taking in the you know, funds and funding and whatever. You know, kind of like, no, I don't think so. You know, it's like there's, there's a better way, you know. And I'm not much into the professionalism aspect of Christianity. 
I am into the provision aspect in some ways, you know, that you provide according to, you know, that with which it's been given. But it's a long story on that one. But the point is, is that the education process is meant to be for the father to learn how to be a teacher. For the father to learn how to be a father is by way of training his children up. He does it every day anyway, so does the mother. If you don't have a mother, then the father is the mother. If you don't have a mother or father, then, you know, you have to educate yourself and train yourself up. Use the Internet. But the point is, there is an education process going on, and we call that the Holy Spirit. You can ask the Holy Spirit to inspire you if you don't have a father or mother. You can ask the Holy Spirit, if you're the father, to teach. You can ask the Holy Spirit, if you're the mother, to teach, and he will give you the ability to do that. Period. Just ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find, knock, door shall be open. Those things will be made available to you. If you don't want to do those things and you are either shirking or reassigning those responsibilities to someone else, own up to it. Be responsible. Say, hey, look, you know what? Yeah, those children are my byproduct of my physical, sexual relationships that I've had with a, another person, and now they're my responsibility to train up in the world in the way that they should go. And God has commanded me to do that, and it's my responsibility to ensure that they have that proper education in order to make the right choices and to go the right way so they don't wind up in hell. Because really, those children are your blood on your hands if you do not raise them up in the way that they should go. So I was having this interesting conversation and enjoying it. And I was laughing, so I put on this hat in order to dedicate this to you know, all those, you know, God bless them in the South that are probably, you know, not wearing these kind of hats, not doing the things that I saw when I was in Texas or Louisiana. I never made it to Georgia. I think I would have been in Texas, Louisiana, and Tennessee. But other than that, I don't think I made it any farther south than that. Never been to Florida. You know, no idea what's down there. To me, it's just a, you know, big flat, in my mind, a big flat swampland that, you know, kind of like I've developed into, you know, now the retirement community of the world. <laughs> You know, it's where all the New Englanders go in order to retire. <laughs> Unless, well, if you're Jewish, you know. But if you're not, well, okay. But it's a long story. It's kind of like how all Alaskans seem to move to Arizona. Well, it seems like all New Englanders seem to move to Florida. It's just one of those things. So, in discussing that education process, you know, we came to the realization that, you know, really, it can be done. The choice is, will it be done by our response to God inspiring us? Or will it be done by those things that we've conspired to do? And in that conversation, I was laughing because as the conversation progressed, I saw a different reason why the point and the conversation was going. As the conversation progressed between three of us, God seemed to bring out this whole idea of personal inter... I call it interlocution, meaning that there's information being opened up and related that normally the person might not have said except they started off by education and it progressed to the point of personal exhortation in the sense that they were talking about you know their personal health issues and personal financial issues and coming to a place where it was discussing also some of the benefits of another ethnic group that they could benefit from and how they enjoyed that part of it. And I thought, wow, someone else reading this from afar, if they could step outside of the box and look at it, would be blessed by the conversation. Because it amused me to see how the original post started in one direction, but God used it for another reason, completely opposite of what the people that started it initially thought they were going to get or do or respond to in the midst of that conversation. And that's what God does with you. You never know when you start a conversation or you start a direction where it may lead. God may choose halfway through whatever ministry you're in, whatever direction you've gotten in the car to drive through, whatever place you are or whatever thing you're doing to interrupt you. God may interrupt your plans at any point in time in the day that you set forward. For instance, if you're at work and suddenly there's a bomb threat, you're getting out of the building, I'm sure. <laughs> That's an interruption. That's what God wants to be able to do with you any time of the day. 
He wants to be able to inspire you and direct you in the way he wants you to go, whether it be to stand still, to move, to go forward, to turn to the left, to the right. He wants to be that personally involved in your life so that you would realize it may not always be the plans you set forward and as you're in the midst of them, exactly what you think the end result will be. God may just take you that far by inspiring you with thinking you were going to get that, when in reality, halfway through, he leads you somewhere else to do something else. Don't be surprised if the redirect of God is the direction of God. Hold your fort. Remember that my followers are to be a peculiar people, separated from among others. Different ways, a different standard of living, different customs, accentuated by different motives. Pray for love. Pray for my spirit of love to be showered on all you meet. Deal with yourself severely. Learn to love discipline. Never yield one point that you have already won. Discipline, discipline, discipline yourself. Love it and rejoice. Rejoice always. Mountains can be removed by thought and by desire if you choose to remove them. Never let your own personal prejudices, your own personal determinations of what you think is the realization of what you made a, a snap knee judgment call on someone or something be the bottom line and the final decision that you've made and you don't change when you get more information that causes you to come to a realization that there is a differentiation of what you thought you knew as opposed to what you actually see happening. That's the thing that we learn in life daily. I could pull up a weed in a garden and let, well, I could pull, I could see two weeds, let's say it this way. <laughs> I was like, where do I go from there? Well, I'm lost, <laughs> I pulled it out. Um, if I had two weeds, I could pull one out and throw it away and let the other one grow and discover, oops, that wasn't a weed, though it looked like it in the initial stages, it turned out to be a beautiful flower. I have some like that that I'm looking across at the camera, which is why I got distracted about two weeds and one weed, because frankly, they look like weeds. <laughs> All of them. <laughs> I would have yanked them out a long time ago. But because I knew the seeds that I planted, <laughs> they're growing. They still look like weeds, but I'm sure once they grow up, you know, and they blossom, they're going to be plants and beautiful. Right now, they look like weeds, but I'm not going to pull them up. So you see, God deals with our life like that also. A lot of times what we think we see and we know now, once time has expired, we'll discover that we weren't right, but in the fullness of time, the complete revelation of what they are will be made known. That's true with you. You may not be perfect today. You may look like a weed. You may act like a weed. You may talk like a weed. But you know, God's going to blossom your life because he promised he would do it one way or another. And someday you'll wake up, whether you think so or not, shocked at how much you had changed from where you were to where you are. It's not really so much about what you can do for yourself as what God does in yourself about what he's chosen to do live your life. He's going to work on you constantly. Now, obviously, it's as they're being pushed over is that they're getting stronger roots. Their root system is getting stronger and stronger and as they grow stronger and stronger, gradually their stalk gets thicker and thicker and as their stalk gets thicker and thicker, the plant keeps making itself stronger where it needs to be and eventually it stands in the wind. The oak tree is a prime example of that. The oak tree, when it's first a sapling, just gets blown over back and forth. But eventually as it gets thicker and stalks get bigger and as it grows up, that sap becomes so solid in it that even the branches don't get broke off. As a matter of fact, most of the time when you see in a strong wind, you don't see oak tree branches usually getting blown off. You see the whole tree getting blown down. <laughs> There's some strong wood in that oak. <laughs> it's heavy duty. And that's the reality of what God is doing with you. He's making you from a sapling into an oak tree 
by his own decision making process and in time you'll turn out to be more of a, a blossom that God has chosen to use than a weed in the garden that God has planted you in. So don't be surprised if people mistake who you are at first until they get to know what you are in God. That's the way that reality works in the kingdom of heaven as we grow to know one another gradually, step by step, through time, as opposed to making no time in order to understand or comprehend what the love of God is able to do in the long suffering and the mercy and grace that God has given us.